I'm an idiot. Okay, guys, I did this. I, I did this already, and I did a great review. I mean, it was a really good review. I hit key points. I went. I went into character. Into character. Into characters. I went into plot. What might happen? What they did right? They didn't do really anything wrong because this was a brilliant episode. What I didn't like about this because there's uh, one or two things I didn't like about the episode. But there's one thing I left out. The entire. The, I'm not saying like I I didn't make, leave some. Of it, I didn't leave like like some clips of it. No, I left out the entire Asami plotline in this. And I love the Asami plotline. So to make sure I don't do do that again. To make sure I don't do that again. We are going to start. With the Asami plot. Once I stop bouncing. With the Asami plot line. Alright. And once I get my camera in its proper spot. Haha. -ha. So now I have to move up. Are we ready? Then in three, two, one. Review. The Asami part I really love. We got to see the return of the one and only. Hiroshi Sato. I, I love saying it like that. Hiroshi Sato. <laughs> but uh, we got to see the return of Hiroshi. Um, is he? I do not think he's faking. I do not think he's trying to get through Asami because he's he, he ain't getting out of jail. I think they were tying up an un, loose end of with the relationship between Asami and her father. How you know the first time she went there. Returned all his letters. She hadn't opened a single one. Said, "I don't want to. I don't want to see you. I don't want to hear from you ever again." And he said, "He he was sorry for everything he did, and that she was his greatest creation. Not the mechs, not the airplanes, but her. Not the equestrians. Her. She was his greatest creation." I like that. I really like. I I love it whenever things use that line. You know, "You are my greatest creation." Except for Red vs. Blue, then it was just like, director, shut up. <laughs> um, uh, but I love that line, and so, and just because the, it was Hiroshi, it was Hiroshi and Asami just made it just, it was like, so much win! <laughs> you know, so, I mean, hate this light, hate, I hate, I hate this light. This light is evil, and I want it to die. So sorry about this, guys, but I just have to do something about this. And uh, you guys are actually kind of lucky that I messed up that I messed up with the Asami, whole Asami thing because in the last one I was <laughs> I had technical difficulties, and then in the second half of it I was eating through it, and I was like, so you know, with Verwick and all, I was doing that. So you guys are kind of lucky. I having I forgot about Asami. Uh, I'm I'm not happy that I forgot about Asami though. But yeah, and then you know she she did what was mentioned that they used to do a lot and um uh in book three they, they she mentioned that they used to do this a lot. They play play show. Yeah yeah. <clears throat> you can kind of still still have the light still coming through a bit, but it's not as bad. As it was, so they play pie show, and I that when they left off, and they were and like he like he said, I that w it wouldn't, I wouldn't ha I I I couldn't be happier than playing pie show with my daughter. I really like that 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 the feels, man, the feels. Now let's do all the stuff I mentioned. <laughs> so, Kuvira, I'm gonna throw a wild ball there. Kuvira might be the villain. <laughs> no, we knew that before the season was gonna start. <laughs> uh, but no, um, yeah. So, um, Bolin has deserted, or she, he tried to. He, Bolin and Varric just tried to desert the army. Julie, Julie, how dare you? How dare you, Julie? Shame on you! Shame on you for insulting Varric. Telling the guards to do the thing to him? The thing? The thing? How could you think such a thing as to do the thing to Varric? 
Call him a moron? I will, I will end you. That, that just... And then, you know, <laughs> then, then that, there was that... No, that, that, that's not right, Julie. And then there's that Zurich moment, you know, like, who's gonna clean this mess? <laughs> oh, man, I'm sure Elizabeth Ross is like, ah! <laughs> <sighs> and then, uh, but yeah, like, when she was, when Julie was on the train, train, and, uh, no, hold uh, on, uh, uh, no, I'm just trying to remember what I said last time, I'm sorry, but no, I love how the increment of weight that Varric uses is the Julie. It weighs about two Julies. And then when he was trying to lift Julie up, ah, you know, you could lose a few Julies yourself, you know. No, sir, I think you're just weak. Did you just call Varric weak, Julie? Nope, I'm, I'm done. That does not... I'm done. That does not, that does not fly in my town. All right? Colin Varick Week does not fly in Williamtown. But you want to know what does fly in Williamtown? I will tell you what flies in Williamtown, and that is Cora being mature. Yes, Cora was mature in this episode by wanting to talk it out instead of just going there and punching stuff. Because that's what she usually does. And I was talking to my friend about this episode, and it's like, Cora, Cora wants to talk it out. And he was like, yeah, what's wrong with that? I'm like, Cora, just, just hear my words, Cora wants to talk it out. And he was like, yeah. Because <laughs> he, you know, was, get, was understanding the whole thing about her maturing, you know, with three years. And I get that too, I get that too, but it's, uh, it's just so, still so weird to have Cora want to talk things out. Because this is Cora we're talking about. Not Bolin. Do you see where I'm coming from? I mean, with Bolin, he's... Uh, just, and I, I like it, I like it, I like it. Like I said, that does fly in Williamtown, but, I mean, it's just so, it's just a little weird to change your character, and Mila was again just like, what are you doing? Like, like we can't, we, wait, we, we, we found you, and now, and now we don't even get a fight? And like, what's the point? But the point was so that the world could be restored to balance me, though. You have to understand these things. And, um, uh... So... And then... The spirit... The, the spirit vine that Varric was experimenting on. Um, uh... I was wrong. It's not clean energy. It's a weapon. It's a spirit weapon. And when I saw that, and when it fired... First thing, the first thing that came to my mind was... Vatu and the Unavatu with, you know, the whole purple death thing, because it was purple too, and made the same sound like, or no, whatever sound it makes, you know, like, you know, Vatu sort of did from where his face should be, you know, and then Unavatu did from his chest. That was awesome. That, that, that was awesome. And then, you know, he's like, D no, we're shutting down production. This is, what if this caused the wrong thing? I was like, I love what Kavir said, like, says, when does that matter to you? And he's like, yeah, I mean, there's this, this voice in my head, like, that's called your conscience, sir. <laughs> and then he said, I should listen to my conscience, and Kavir, you know, threatened to kill him. And uh, if he didn't continue, he's like, oh, no, vo voices are liars, voices are liars. I'll keep working. And then, you know, when Bolin tried to kill him all out, and, uh, speaking of Bolin, that Bora ship, it's, uh, it's got a few holes in it. You might want to patch it up, or maybe, uh, no, maybe let it sink, maybe, maybe rebuild that, uh, that, no, not Bora, Bora ship, uh, Bo Bopo ship has some, has a few holes in it. You might want to patch it up and build back Bora. You know, build that Bora ship back up, I mean, yeah, that was a pretty good ship, you know, you guys had, so, uh, you might want to rebuild it. Just saying. Bobo ship, it's, it's done its time. It's time to bring back the original Bolin ship. Bora! Or maybe Boleska. Either one is fine. <laughs> okay, but no. And so. 
so freaking glad we got to see. We got to finally see it. Cold, heartless, war machine, Zhu Li. Yes, and it did deliver perfectly. So, okay, yeah, maybe, maybe, maybe. Okay, so, and then, uh, you know, I really like who, how Kuvira is a woman of her word. How she said, you know, uh, when she was talking to Korra, go back to Stu, like, we're, we're, cease fire until you go talk to Stu and report back to me what, what she said, and then we'll make a decision as to what needs to be done. And so I like that. And then Korra goes back to Zalfu, and freaking... She goes to see, she asks Batar Sr., hey, where's Sue? Where, where's Sue? I need to talk to her. Oh, Sue w took Wing and Wei to go wipe out Kuvira. Gosh darn it, Sue! Gosh darn it! And, um, uh, Kuvira's gonna be a different villain than, um, uh, Zaheer, Amon, and Unalak. Because she has the popular support. Unalak... Zaheer and Amon did not have the popular support. Amon kind of did. He was like 50-50, but... Unalak and Zaheer, they did not have the popular, the popular um, uh, favor at all. Now, Zaheer had the popular favor among us. <laughs> uh, uh, Zaheer. <coughs> Sorry. But, um, uh, where was I? Oh, yeah. You know, she got there and, um, uh, she was, and, oh, another thing. Yeah, no, uh, I was on something. Cora got there and it's like, and like, Cora, where have you been? Uh, never mind. Go into the Avatar State. Destroy Kavira's army. Yeah, no, I don't do that anymore. <laughs> I was kind of hilarious. She didn't say that exactly, but, you know what I'm saying? Like, the way she said it kind of made it feel like that. Like, yeah, n nah, no. Uh, Consuela, no, no. We no. Uh, we not do that anymore. No, no, no. So, uh, <laughs> yeah. Cora! Uh, but, I really like how we got to see backstory on, um, uh, Kuvira and Sue, uh, what their relationship kind of was. I really like that, and she said, like, she brainwashed Batar Jr. No, I think Batar Jr. already had those, uh, some, some of those ideals, and then it turns, he found Kuvira, and then he and Kuvira start talking about it, and it turns out they both had the same ideals. Then, um, uh, they pursued to go to Ba Sing Se, then they pursued a romantic relationship, and now they're engaged. Yeah. Awkward. <laughs> And, uh, so, yeah, and then, Opal, she's not having, any, like I said, the bubble ship is, uh, in trouble. Opal's not having any of Bolin's, any, or not really Bolin's, but Kuvira's, like, yeah, but I, like I said, I, uh, my prediction, if I didn't already say it, I think I did say it in my, in, uh, my review for After All These Years, but my prediction was that, Bolin would go back to one of the Earth Kingdom states and see how how its people are in still in, are back into poverty and want to go against them. And then you know Opal said, "I've seen it. These guys are miserable now. These people are slaves." And so now I think Bolin's like that is like saying like you know I've never really been back there. And you know when um uh, Kuvira I mean, he was in the inner circle, so Kuvira and Batar Jr. We're telling him that's all true. He's like, yeah, and then he wanted to go see Vera. He got denied. Opened the latch. Freed them, but freed Vera and Julie. And then we got the whole mech fight. Cold Heartless and War Machine Julie. Who built these things? Who, what, did, what more on built these things? You did, sir. Shut up, Julie. <laughs> and then Lava Bending. We got Lava Bending back. I love Lava Bending. Gazan's my favorite Led Lotus. He's just so awesome, and then, you know, Bolin's, Bolin's now lava, a lava bender. Bolin the lava bender is awesome. Uh, just, yes. Bolin, and I hope we get more lava bending, because I really do lo like lava bending. And just another qu side question, when's Cora going to change out of her Earth Kingdom clothes? She, we've seen images of her 
with her short hair in water tribe clothes. When are we going to get to see that? I want to see that. Right now. Make it happen. I'm waiting. I guess not. <laughs> so, yeah. Sorry about the whole Asami forget thing. Dang. My bad. Oh, no.